Hello, everyone. I want to start off by wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. I've got a couple of days to go, but this week has just felt special anyway. You get out and you see people in public and they're really nice and they're happy to see anybody. And I wish it could be like this all year round. Now there's some hustle and bustle they are trying to get the last widget for their kid, whatever it is. We're getting your last bit of Christmas shopping done for the meal, the big meal where we always eat too much. That's all right. We should be with friends and family, so that's okay. So the title for this one is Love One Another as We Get Ready for the Rapture. This could be our last Christmas together. Think about it. Now, if it's not you know, this week, it could be next week, it could be next year. It can still fit within the timeline because we don't know 100%. All the guesses are still going on. It could be Christmas Day, it could be New Year's Day or early into next year, or it could be any time in the future. God's going to take care of us and tell he doesn't need us down here and or the danger gets too bad. So don't worry about it. Okay. Now, this time of year, we, we celebrate Christmas. It's the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Those that accept him, accept his birth, his death, and his resurrection can become children of God. Our names are already in a book. That helps. We can become his disciples. Now, that's nothing fancy. We're not an apostle, but we can, well, we kind of are but we're his disciples. We can go around spreading the gospel. Now, if you're a Christian, you should be excited for these times. One, because it's Christmas, and two, we're in the end times. We don't have a whole lot longer down here before we get to be with our Lord. So we should be excited. If you're not a Christian, hang on, and I'll tell you at the end what you can do to become one. Okay, my normal spiel. If you like this video, please click the like button. YouTube counts those. It helps get more people to see this. We're already struggling with the filter crowd out there, so we need your help. Also, if you like this and want to want to hear more, subscribe to this channel. It's quick and easy. It's a button right down there. Just hit subscribe. If you don't like it later on, you can unsubscribe. There's no penalty. Okay, and of course, if you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified when I release a new video. Okay. I don't ask for a whole lot from you guys other than clicking and liking, but you can help me by sharing this in other videos. Sharing seems the best way to get the message out. I don't always get a lot of visibility on searches because of the filter, but if you share it, it bypasses the filter and I can get more, more followers. We want to get as much, of this message out to as many people as we can in these end times. So that really helps. Um, right now, I said before, I'm not asking for donations, but I do need your prayers. Now, if I can keep not asking for donations, I will. I've been managing to patch together some of my uh, hardware that's been falling apart, but I do need to deal with that at some point. So we may look at that early in the new year, but I didn't want to burden you with that over Christmas. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I, I just simply want to read to you from 1 John. I want to keep this message short. Uh, I want to encourage you and, and share Christmas with you, but the best way to do that is by sharing love. And I want to read out of the uh, first book of John, or John 1, and we're going to take a look at what he had to say. These are encouraging things for this time and for this season. So if you want to follow along, uh, it's 1 John 3, verse 1. Children of God, love one another. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we'll be, we would be called children of God, and such we are. 
For this reason, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not appeared yet what we will be. We don't know what we're gonna turn into. We know we're gonna get new bodies, but what are they? Continuing on. We know that when it happens, when he appears, we will be like him. And because we will see him just as he is, and everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. Verse four, everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away our sins and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has ever seen him or knows him. Now we're talking habitually on this. Stop here for a bit. We're talking habitually on this. We sin every day as Christians, but we go to Jesus every day, multiple times a day if necessary, and ask for forgiveness. He gets rid of our sin. He doesn't cover it up like the old law. He gets rid of it. He casts it away and never looks at it again. So we do sin. But what he's talking about here is an overall feeling. If you're just constantly sinning all day long and you don't care about it, then you're a sinner, a sinner that does not know God. Because if you've got the spirit in you, that spirit will convict you. If you make a mistake and you ask for forgiveness right then, he's not going to hound you. It's what he's there for to help us. But if you're just going to repeatedly do something that you know is wrong, he's going to be there to hound you as well. We've all gotten that thump on the head. And if you turn around and repent, you're okay. It won't be anymore. But it may be a slap on the side of the head eventually if you don't stop. God loves us and he wants to protect us. Okay, verse 7. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. And the one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning, and the Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. No one who is born of God practices sin, because his seed abides in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this, the children of God and the children of, de of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. Good words. We need to think about these, not just listen to this, but you need to basically meditate on this today. This is your job today. Read this over a few times and quietly meditate on it. Uh, continuing on with verse 11. For this is the message which you've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was the evil one and slew his brother. And for that reason, and for what reason did he slay him? Because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brethren. And he who does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you do not know that. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love without with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. We will know by this that we are of the truth and will assure our heart before him in whatever our heart condemns us for God is greater than our heart and knows all things. 
Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we will receive from him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. This is his commandment, that we believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. Got that? And that we love one another, just as he commanded us. The one who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. We know by this that he abides in us, by the spirit whom he has given us. That's the end of our reading, and I will end it with amen. John's really good about uh, looking at God and explaining him. So you can read all of 1 John if you want. But the bottom line is now, if you don't know God, if you don't know Jesus personally yet, now's the time. He's waiting. He's been waiting for you to come to him all of his life, all of your life, I should say because you need him and he needs you. Jesus is gonna be outside your door, outside your heart's door knocking. Can I come in? Can we talk? Romans 3.20, I'm paraphrasing there. So you need to invite him into your heart. And if you think that's what you want, as a simple prayer, you can pray. There's nothing you have to do. You can't work your way to heaven. That's been shut down. There's no way to get there. You can't get there by following the law because you can't follow the law. The only way to get to heaven is to pray to God, to pray to Jesus. If you follow along with this simple prayer, you too can be a Christian. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sinful ways and ask you to come into my heart. I accept your free gift of salvation that you paid for with your blood on the cross. I want to be a Christian. I want to be born again. And I want eternal life. It's a simple prayer. If you prayed that and meant it with your heart, if you have faith in God and Jesus, that all you have to do is to pray that prayer, you're a Christian. Nothing else you do will make you a Christian. Now, as a Christian, your job is to learn more about God, to help others. You should be baptized as a show of what you've done. But these other things don't make you a Christian. I want you to have eternal life with me and other Christians in heaven. And in a little while, We're going to be be with him because he's going to come and rescue us from what's going on in this crazy world. If you haven't noticed, things are getting worse. We're seeing the same things that we've seen all of our life, but they're escalating. We're told they're like birth pains. They get closer together and stronger, the closer to the birth. Now, we're not going to be here for the birth part, but we're going to be here through the birth pains, part of them anyway. The book of Revelations tells of a very sad story for the world. And we don't want to be down here. So please accept Jesus and join our family where we're told simply to love one another, to love God and to love one another. If you can do those two things, you don't have to do anything more. Of course, they will inspire you to do more, but you don't have to. All right. Until we meet in the skies, and everyone have a Merry Christmas. God bless.